Back in December, I got this really cool new guitar gadget. I've had a few months to play with it now, and honestly, it's been blowing my mind. But at the same time, there's this one question that gets brought up all the time among music lovers, and I can't stop thinking about it. So that's what we're here for today. The acoustic guitar, originally known as a timbre, was invented in 1500 BC. There's been a few different adaptations over time, but the modern shape of the classical or acoustic guitar we've come to know and love made its debut in the Renaissance era. In the 1800s, the acoustic guitar was reinvented yet again to more of the modern shape that we know today. The major differences here were the change in body shape and the addition of steel strings, and this was done by Christian Martin, the founder of Martin Guitars. So while it's gone over some slight alterations over the years, really since its inception 3,000 years ago, not much has changed. And that's really the beauty of the instrument. Over time, it's managed to preserve its raw, organic expression of music. However, in 2021, we now have access to some new technology that really didn't even exist until very recently. The acoustic guitar may have just gotten its first upgrade in over 200 years. What I'm about to play for you has not been post-processed at all. It's just a single microphone recording a single acoustic guitar. First I'll play with just the raw guitar and then I'll show you with the modern upgrade. So what I just played for you right there was using the Tonewood amp. And it's this little thing that magnets onto the back of your guitar so it doesn't damage it. And what it does is turn the inside of your guitar into an amp with a whole bunch of pre-built effects like reverb, delay, phaser, wah-wah, and a whole bunch of other ones and mixes. And then you can dial in specific tones to really get the exact sound you want out of your guitar. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not being paid to make this video. They did send me the tone wood, but I just wanted to do an honest review and start an honest debate. So there's no denying that this makes the guitar sound amazing. This really makes this acoustic guitar not not sound like an acoustic guitar anymore. It sounds like something more, something bigger, something grander. And that's amazing, that's incredible, but the one thing this does make me think is, is this a good thing? Is this an improvement on the acoustic guitar, or is this taking away from the organic feel of the instrument? So I guess what I'm trying to ask, when it comes down to it, is does technology impact music in a positive or negative way? Let me know your comments in the comment section below, and let's get into it. So the first point four is in the name, tone. Tone is arguably as important a part of a specific style or genre of music as the notes you're playing themselves. Let's be honest, the acoustic guitar on its own is somewhat limited to the different sounds that you can make from it. So when you have the option of adding in different reverbs, delays, phasers, EQs, you know, what have you, it expands what you're able to do a ton and lets you have a whole bunch of different options of the sounds you can make with your acoustic guitar. There's virtually nothing I've ever recorded that doesn't have some sort of processing on it to enhance the sound and really make it sound like a specific style or genre or even just a sound that I'm feeling for that day. From a musician's standpoint, tone adds an entire extra element of creativity. Here I'm going to show you an example of an acoustic rock kind of song. And you can see how the different stylistic and tonal elements that you add to it can really enhance that style specifically. So what I'm going to do right here is dial in a big hull reverb on the tone wood, and that's going to make it a big grand sound like I'm playing in an entire arena, but when I'm actually just playing here out on the back porch.
playing around with your tone and your sound is great and all, but the first obvious argument against it is that shouldn't you as a musician be able to make that sound with your fingers or as a vocalist with your voice or as a pianist also with your fingers? Eddie Van Halen became famous for playing $70 guitars in live concerts and no one ever complained about his tone. In order to reach modern production standards, there's so much post-production done on any song that's released these days that you can never really be sure whether the singer actually sounds like she sounded on the recorded song or whether the Instagram guitarist didn't just try a hundred takes and produce it so much to find that one perfect Instagram post. Even live, there's often a team of people behind the curtain backstage that are working in real time on the sound to enhance it in a live performance that you really can't be sure how much the instrumentalists are actually doing versus what was pre-recorded versus what's being edited live on the fly. And what that boils down to is it's a very valid argument to say that all this technology really just takes away from the spirit of the music. Now on the other hand, there's still only so much you can do with the technology and it really just enhances the musicianship you're still going to be able to hear a difference between an extremely talented musician and someone who's an amateur. And on that point, all this updated technology has dramatically improved our ability to record high quality sounds. If you gave an extremely talented musician from the 60s like Jimi Hendrix the upgraded technology that we have today, there's no doubt that they'd end up sounding dramatically better than they would on their roughly recorded stuff from the live shows of the 60s. So what this really does is gives really talented musicians the opportunity to sound incredible. And one thing I've always personally believed is that everything looks 20% worse on camera or sounds 20% worse when you record it. So that extra recording technology just bumps it up to try and better replicate what you'd experience live because there's no arguing that there's just something about that live music experience that's way better than anything you could ever hear recorded. Everybody loves going to concerts and there's a reason that technology is not gonna replace that even if it does enhance it. After that little bluegrass interlude, the next con, what I think is a serious, serious problem with modern technology and music is the social aspect. With so much of music today just being made by a solo artist and their laptop, you have a lot less people learning instruments and a lot less jams happening. Throughout all of time, music has been a very, very social thing. You and all the people in your tribe come together and play music around the campfire. If you don't have anyone that can play instruments, then you don't have that anymore. These moments where you're just present and full and one with the music and playing music with other people are some of the best moments of our life. And with the technology re removing that, like technology removing a lot of social interaction, this is a huge problem and we have a lot of people feeling unfulfilled from one musician to another, I think we all want and crave those experiences. And that's a big part of why we play music in the first place is to share that social connection. And if the technology eliminates that, then that kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of the music in the first place. And with that right here, I'm gonna leave it at that. These are just some thoughts I thought. I wanna hear your experiences. I wanna hear your opinions. I made this video to start a debate and uh, hopefully hear some different perspectives. Is technology good or bad for music? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Let's start a discussion. I'd love to hear your perspective. So with all that being said here, the Tonewood amp that I'm using right now is what inspired this entire discussion and inspired this video. And honestly, this is one product, one piece of technology that I think is really fun to use and really cool. It's a lot better to have this little box on the back of your guitar than carry around an entire pedal board. Just wanna say again, this is not a paid review. I just wanted to make this video and share my honest thoughts on a cool product. I've spoken personally with the guys over at Tonewood and they have agreed to give you guys a discount if you're interested in finding out more. You can do that by looking at the link in the description below. When we first opened this back in December, we filmed this just to get our honest organic reaction. So here's a few clips from that to show you what we thought of it when we actually first opened this. 
tonal amp. We got a little patch cord to connect it to the guitar, and there's the actual amp itself. So it looks like on this we've got three different dials. I guess cut frequency and volume. We'll see what all those mean later. Looks like it's got power button, input and output jack there. Uh, insert, so an aux cable I guess for something. Something's gonna happen here. Oh. That's cool. So you can set everything. We've got a pre-delay here. That gives a bit of time before the delay actually starts. Make your tone a little crisper. So if we set up that pre-delay. Oh yeah. It's a lot more clear even though we've got a huge decay time. So we've got those plate Tend off once again. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion and maybe we can share some different perspectives. As always, please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to see more videos like this.